Partridge Island, Canada's very own version of Shutter Island, is located approximately one kilometer off of Bayshore Beach in West St. John, and is shrouded in mystery and urban legend. We decided to make the dangerous 45-minute journey to the small island to investigate it for ourselves. The path we must take is located on a hidden trail behind one of the many run-down and graffiti-covered lookouts that also litter the island. In order to reach the now abandoned and unkept land, you must first travel across the dangerous old stone breakwater. Although in the past it was possible to visit this historic site by boat tour, at the time of filming this video, Partridge Island is private property. If you are caught trespassing on the island, you are subject to a pretty hefty $5,000 fine. Lucky for us, thick fog surrounded the area like a dome, making it impossible to see further than 12 feet in front of us. This not only provided us with cover from the Canadian Coast Guard that often patrols by helicopter, but also made it feel as though we had been transported to another dimension entirely. Due to its mysterious nature, it is hard to find extensive information on the history of the island. We have done our best to research the story of what has taken place throughout the years, however the pieces of the puzzle are still few and far between. It's hard to say if we will ever truly know all of the gruesome details. In 1785, when St. John was first established, the island was dedicated to be used as a military base and quarantine station. Nicknamed the Loyalist City, those who wanted to move to St. John would first have to be processed through Partridge Island. The first of many hospitals was not built until 1830. However, this facility, as well as many others, proved to be inadequate as typhus, cholera, smallpox, and other infectious diseases plagued the 19th century. After we hiked our way up the steep shoreline, our first stop was the island's lighthouse. First established in 1791, the original lighthouse met its fate in 1832 when one of the many fires that swept the island burned it down, only for it to be rebuilt the following year. At the time, this project was paid for with 300 British pounds. Although it is still the same building, in 1911 the foundation was heightened with a cement understructure. And fun fact, the world's first ever steam foghorn was installed here on the island in 1859. Approximately 0.6 of a kilometer long and 0.3 wide, Partridge Island is a total of 18 square kilometers. Although we could not find information on when the wooden helicopter pad was first installed, it still remains in place for the Canadian Coast Guard to utilize in search of trespassers such as ourselves. Many urban legends that circulate out there about the island. If you mention making the trek, it will undoubtedly be met with its fair share of warnings from the St. John locals. One common story I heard growing up was that because the bodies of the victims were buried so close to the surface, it is possible to contract one of these horrific diseases simply by stepping foot on the island. But that's not where the stories end. Although it's hard to prove true or not, many warn of the dangers of getting trapped on the landmass. It is said that if you lose track of time on the island, high tide can sweep in and cover the breakwater, the only way of getting on and off the island on foot. In 1974, Partridge was officially declared a historic site. Over the years, there have been talks of funding the reopening of the island to the public. However, at this time, it remains what Vice has called a dangerous rite of passage for New Brunswick's wasted youth. The pest house did not see use until 1816 when the first case of smallpox arrived on the island. Since then, quarantine facilities were expanded several times over the years to try and accommodate for the thousands of Eastern European travelers. The quarantine station actually was still functional all the way up until 1941. Amongst the 33,000 immigrants that arrived in New Brunswick during the 1800s, most of them were processed through here on Partridge Island. Upon arrival, immigrants were required to bathe in kerosene and then rinse off in scalding hot water. What we are approaching next is one of the few remaining structures that are still intact to this day. 
From what we can gather through our research, the building that appears on the screen is one of the 13 hospitals that was constructed on the island to treat the infected victims over the years. Walking through this barren wasteland, it's hard to fathom that just 60 years ago, there were people still living here on the island. Apart from the doctors and nurses and other hospital staff that lived here during the quarantine, the island was also home to several thousand military personnel, over two dozen lighthouse attendants, and surprisingly enough, there was also a small fishing community that called the tiny island home until the late 1940s. There are many abandoned foundations around the island that have overgrown bushes of flowers surrounding them, seemingly planted on purpose. The thought of people's personal homes in an area that was dedicated to death and sickness is unnerving, to say the least. However, there was so many families raising their children at one point, there was even a school for all of the young islanders. The vast majority of immigrants coming to Canada were fleeing the potato famine that struck Ireland during the mid-1800s. In the summer of 1847 alone, more than 15,000 people were processed through the small island that sadly at the time did not have the facilities to house such a large influx of sick people. Over 2,000 desperate people seeking refuge lost their lives that summer, 800 of which died at sea, another 600 on the island just minutes away from their intended destination. The rest met their fate shortly after reaching the mainland. A Celtic cross was erected in 1927 to honor those who lost their lives during this time. The monument is also the final resting place of George MacArthur, the man who constructed the monument who ended up sadly passing away five years later in 1932. Just feet away from an old military observation post, the Celtic cross is one of the few landmarks that is still visible from the shore. Exploring an island where thousands lost their lives battling infectious diseases while living through a global pandemic of our own is sobering to say the least. It's hard to imagine the horror of taking your last dying breath trapped on a tiny island thousands of miles away from home, but unfortunately this was the harsh reality of this time. One of the main functions of the island at the time of conception was military defense. Apart from the observation posts and the multiple lookouts located on the shores, a majority of the abandoned structures contribute to a large gun battery that was built in 1800. First put to use in the War of 1812 to defend the newly allocated locals and the St. John Harbor, the Artillery Center continued to receive funding and fortification until 1939. After playing an instrumental role in defending Canada, the military base was officially retired after 150 years of service in 1974, when the island was officially declared a historic site. I have been to the island many times before, and I was always left wondering what these chamber-like hallways were actually used for. Come to find out, most of this structure was built just to store the ammunition for the island's large artillery gun. The eerie atmosphere is only intensified by the thought of giant missiles lining the now barren rooms. Something that is not addressed in any of the articles we found is the exact purpose of these long, extensive tunnels that run underneath the island. Pitch black, soggy, and musty, the tunnels are rumored to be where paranormal activity is at its peak. 
With all of the pain and suffering witnessed over the years, the superstitious would argue that this island is a paranormal gold mine. We tried our best to go as far inside the tunnels as possible, but unfortunately we did not come fully equipped for a proper deep dive into the underbelly of Partridge, but maybe that was all for good reason. Looking over the site where those who have suffered laid to rest is a humbling experience. The now toppled headstones that mark the mass graves are truly a metaphor for the hopes of the Irish people that came crumbling down due to famine and disease of that time. As if to add emphasis to the suffering that went on, the first reported deaths on the island, Marks and Angus Murphs, were only teenagers when smallpox tragically took their lives. In all of the sickness that the island witnessed, it is said at one point all of the doctors fell ill. As a result, cases and diseases peaked and death ran rampant. Around 40 bodies had accumulated in what was referred to at the time as a dead house. The high number of victims forced mourners to place their loved ones in a mass grave. It is said that the grass above the area grew in a striking and vivid green as a result of nourishment from the bodies. We also wanted to note that the morning that we decided to film this video, we actually did a tarot card reading and throughout the reading there was a lot of symbolism including many mentions of the number 3. Strangely enough, nestled in the rocky beach off to the side of the graves were three balloons. Lost in translation, this felt like some vague message from the universe, however the exact meaning still remains unclear. After a few weeks of doing extensive research and digging on what is considered to be one of Canada's best kept historical secrets, the only thing that is clear is that we are left with more questions than answers. Despite this, we truly hope that you have enjoyed our compilation of information and short film on St. John's very own Shutter Island. With that being said, we welcome you to do your own research and we have left our own resources down below. Try as we might, it is truly impossible to put into words the mysterious atmosphere and ominous presence that the island radiates. If you would like to see us explore more abandoned places, be sure to like this video and comment down below. Please also subscribe so you don't miss a video and check out our other social medias linked in the description for more of our content. Until next time. <laughs> oh <laughs>